For years I had issues with this little delta bandsaw. It never cut well. I was always struggling with the cuts and I recently got it set up so it cuts perfectly. Um, so let me show you how I set it up. And the things I learned most were from YouTube by a guy named Alex Snodgrass. It's probably in one of the suggested videos over here. It's 35 minutes long. I suggest you watch it, but here are the quick things that I learned and how I got this set up. So before you do anything, make sure it's unplugged so you can work on it without fear of hitting the switch. Um, there's a, just a few things you have to set up, but the biggest thing, the number one thing I learned was the blade on the wheel. I was getting lots of drift. It was always drifting offline when I was trying to resaw cuts. And the biggest thing I learned from that video was you, you nece not necessarily want the blade in the center of the wheel, you want the gullet of the teeth in the center of the wheel. And his point was, just because the blade's in the center of the wheel, the teeth might be unsupported. And that's why you're getting drift on the blade. So the setup I have now is the gullet of the teeth. So where the teeth come to the point and then curl around, that deep, the deepest part of that curl should be in the center of the wheel. I think that made the biggest difference. So right here, this is the top wheel, and you can see that that blade is not centered, but the gullet of the center, the teeth are centered on the blade. I used to have this blade shifted over, way over to the left, but now it's supported, the teeth are supported, and it cuts much better. And you can see on the bottom, that's totally different. The teeth are off the front. So I was always concerned about getting these two coplanar and getting them aligned. He said as long as the on the top wheel, the teeth, the gullet of the teeth are centered on that wheel. That's all you need, and that has made the biggest difference. The next thing I did was sharpen the blade. I've been using an old uh, dull blade, so I went through, I got a little, the $9 uh, sharpener from Harbor Freight, and I just went through and touched the blade, sharpened it up. I think that made a big difference. Next, the adjustments. Um, and this saw has the little uh, Allen wrench right there on the side. You can remove this blade guard. Now the adjustments. On the, si the two side adjustments, typically there's a type of friction uh, material or uh, a little two bearings. This has the little friction uh, blocks on the side. They want to be just not touching, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. They're just there in case the blade gets off track. So not a huge amount of adjustment on the top or bottom of the side adjustment adjusters. That's not very critical. On the back, there's a, a wheel, a bearing on the back of the blade. That, he said, take, take a lot of time adjusting that. It shouldn't be touching. It should be as close as you can get it without touching. So you don't need an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. As close as you can get that back wheel without touching, that's where you set it on the top and the bottom. So here are the guides, and I've tried to get this as close as I can without touching the blade, this back guide. And on the front, these don't have to be exact, just as close to supporting the blade as you can. And the last thing he said was tensioning of the blade. Now, some people say, oh, you should flick it and hear a note. It should be this note, it should be that note. His uh, suggestion was just tap it with your finger on the side, and it should deflect an eighth of an inch. So it doesn't matter how big your saw blade is, what type of blade it is, thin, little, just tap it on the side, find a spot here, you just tap it real lightly, and it should deflect an eighth of an inch, and that's how you get the tension. And here's what he meant when he said adjusting, you're just tapping the side of the blade, and it should deflect an eighth of an inch. It doesn't matter what size blade you have, what size saw you have, just tap it on the side and it should deflect an eighth of an inch. So those things, sharpening the blade, centering the, the gullet on the wheel, the adjusters on the blade guides, and the tension, this saw is cutting it better than it ever has. Um, and I think the main thing though that I learned was getting not the, the blade centered, getting the gullet centered. And critically, on the top, you're not as concerned about the bottom. Really, you don't care about the bottom. It doesn't have, they don't have to be coplanar, they don't have to be aligned, as long as you are centered on the gullet on the top. So it's actually off, the, the, the teeth are a little bit off the wheel on the bottom, but it's cutting great because on the top here, it's in the center, the, the teeth are supported, and they're not flexing offline. So those are the things I learned. After you watch this video, I suggest uh, 
Watching his video over here on the left is 35 minutes, but it's super good. And he tells you tons of, ton of stuff about uh, bandsaw and cutting. Um, but I hope this helped. I hope this was a, a quick lesson on getting rid of drift and getting good cuts on a bandsaw, even a cheap one like this. Thanks. Well, I hope you liked the video you just watched. If you did, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button on this side. You can also check out all the videos I've done, um, the playlist from things I've built, things I've fixed, home repair, 3D printing. And on this side, you can check out a recommended video similar to the one you just watched. And as always, down in the description, I'll put a link to my blog, which has more pictures and more information about the video you just watched. Thanks.